This is a 2024 Prius Limited front wheel drive, and we're gonna get into a bit of the suspension on it and analyze some of the components. The first thing I did is use a 21 millimeter socket to loosen these uh, lug nuts on the front wheel, and now we're gonna pull this aluminum wheel off and see how much it weighs. A quick bathroom scale measurement says that this 19 by six and a half wheel with this 195.50 R19 Michelin all season tire on it, weighs in at around 47 pounds, which is pretty reasonable for this size. Going back over to the car, we see that the front suspension is very familiar to anyone that's seen any recent Toyota front wheel drive or front wheel drive based all wheel drive product with a McPherson strut set up here and some familiar components. The first thing we see here is this brake caliper, which is a floating design with a single piston. The brake caliper pattern appears to match the Corolla hatch that I've seen recently, as does the caliper itself. This is an Advix unit uh, with markings of 57-22, and below that it is marked as L61. On the back side, we can see the bleeder and the mounting bolts, and the mounting bolts appear to be spaced at around 130 millimeters, which could be similar to other Toyota models. Moving on from the brakes, we see this upright or knuckle here uh, that the strut is mounted to, and we can see where it connects to the ball joint down here, along with how it connects to the steering. This is really a very standard design for Toyota. I would call this their kind of corporate upright for front wheel drive vehicles. You can see it on a lot of their models, ranging from stuff like the Prius and Corolla to the Camry and even like up to the Highlander. The strut assembly attaches to the top of the knuckle here, and you can see this bottom bolt has an elongated machined area, and that is for an eccentric bolt, basically to allow you to adjust camber on the car. The best way to look at the camber measurement is to look at the rotor here in relation to these two bolts, and it's pretty neutral here, but if for some reason, say you wanted to give it some negative camber for performance reasons, you could theoretically put uh, put this eccentric bolt in a different position that would allow the knuckle to tilt out a little bit, basically pointing the rotor closer to the top bolt here on the strut and tilting the wheel in that direction. Moving to the bottom side of the knuckle, we see the ball joint here, which is fortunately fairly easily serviceable as it bolts to the lower control arm, which is this L-shaped unit that's pretty standard on a lot of front wheel drive cars. And then right above the ball joint, we see a couple of bolts and there is another one up here, up above the CV axle shaft. And those bolts actually hold the hub assembly in place as this has a kind of a package unit with the hub and bearing that can bolt onto the knuckle directly. Moving up the knuckle and up the strut, we see this bracket here that's welded directly to the strut that connects to the anti-roll bar link. And it's a fairly a long unit that connects to the anti-roll bar back here that snakes right below the CV axle shaft and then runs parallel back here with the steering rack. Moving further up, we see the spring seat and of course the spring itself and the strut bellow that protects the strut. And then we see where the strut bolts in in the underhood area. Per the inscription on the strut here, we can see that this is a KYB unit. Uh, and again, looks very similar to stuff that I've seen on something like a Corolla hatch. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a variant of one of those uh, pieces. The bottom of the strut unit here contains bracketry for the brake line that runs back and up to the ABS unit, of course. And then on the other side, we see the bracket for the ABS speed sensor, which also runs into the body up here. Quick measure shows this rotor at just over 11 inches, looks like around 11.1. And as we can see with regen active on this Prius, it doesn't have a lot of wear even at 10,000 miles as this is pretty smooth, almost close to factory finish. On the back side of the rotor, we see this brake dust shield that has some cooling veins on the bottom. And right behind that, we see the other side of the upright with the ABS speed sensor installed directly into it. And then the connection that goes to the tie rod going all the way back to the steering rack here. This is a pretty common design for Toyota front wheel drive vehicles for a while. And front wheel drive vehicles in general that you'll see that employ a McPherson strut setup uh, and the steering rack assembly appears to be something that we've seen on a lot of recent Toyotas, including the GR Corolla, which may open up some options for upgrades on this car for people that maybe want a little bit of a better steering. The L-shaped control arm that we see below here obviously connects to the ball joint at the front, then connects to the subframe over here, and then we see this bushing that connects to the rear of the subframe. 
This is also a very common design. And that bushing back there is what kind of takes the brunt of stuff on the road, like potholes and bumps and things like that. And is a pretty efficient design for this type of suspension. Following that tie rod end inside here, we can see kind of where the steering rack assembly connects to the steering column, along with seeing where the anti-roll bar is here and where those bushings attach which gives us an idea of all of the pieces that are available here on the front end. Of the now that we've seen the front suspension here on the Prius, I can say that there's a lot of opportunities for performance upgrades here. With how some of these components look, I wouldn't be surprised if there are parts that are interchangeable from the Toyota parts catalog, starting with that upright assembly there, which looks very, very similar to things that I've seen on the Camry or even like the GR Corolla that would open up options for components that are already on the market. But suspension wise, there's really not a huge amount that I would do here other than maybe look at some, uh, some struts here that would be a little more lively for what this car has along with some matching springs. As far as the steering is concerned, I would actually look at that GR Corolla unit with the likelihood of having to swap these tie rod ends to match this car, but that could give a quicker ratio with uh, more fun steering. Since this is a hybrid, the brakes don't get used extensively, but if you are planning some performance driving, then I could see pulling out some dual piston units with a slightly bigger rotor from something like the Camry, which with the way these things measure, appears to be able to bolt up to this uh, upright assembly. That would be something that I would have to verify, but right now, from the looks of it, I think that there are some things in the parts catalog that will bolt right up. As far as that anti-roll bar here is concerned, it is pretty beefy and in this scenario with the way this car drives i would actually go for a softer bar here in the front just to kind of reduce some of the understeer that i've noticed or go for a stiffer bar back in the rear which we'll get into here shortly moving to the back of the prius gives us an idea of why the handling is so good because it uses a multi-link setup getting in closer here we see the rear knuckle has two attachment points at the front and instead of two individual links, we have a big old trailing arm that attaches to both points. And at the front of it, we can see where it attaches with a big old bushing here. And this will deal with a lot of forces on the car and absorb things like, you know, potholes and bumps in the road. Directly behind that, we see where the rear damper attaches to the knuckle and where it goes up here towards the hatch area and attaches there. Uh, with this setup, the spring is actually separate and sits in this bucket, which we'll look at here shortly. As this is a multi-link setup, the top of the knuckle is not attached to the damper like we see in the front, but instead is attached to this arm here that goes towards the rear subframe. This arm is what sets the camber for the rear and would be something to adjust if you were looking for performance advantages. Beside that arm, we see some bracketry for things like the rear parking brake cables, plus uh, brake lines and ABS uh, speed sensor wiring, and uh, just kind of all the accessories there. Moving further from there, we see this rear brake caliper with a single piston, along with an integrated electronic parking brake, and a brake rotor that's slightly smaller than what we found in the front. Moving down below will show us the remaining two links. The one here on the right contains a spring bucket and attaches to the rear subframe and is going to be what handles your cornering loads. Moving forward, we see the other link, which as you can see is much, much shorter, which will help in stability when it comes to cornering because it will take a smaller arc. Directly behind that link, we get a look at the backside of the knuckle, including where that trailing arm mounts, along with the anti-roll bar and the anti-roll bar link. Looking at this from a performance standpoint, there are a lot of opportunities back here to make changes and again, opportunities to dip into the Toyota parts bin. That rear anti-roll bar looks almost exactly like the unit from the recent Toyota Corolla hatch, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're able to interchange. Dampers and springs are obviously another area where modifications could happen, along with replacing some of these links with adjustable units to be able to adjust things like camber and toe. 